So folks, today is one of those days for old Donnie where the chickens come home to roost, where he finally gets a taste of the bitter medicine he's been given everybody else for years, if not decades. It is a glorious day in that regard. So we have to go on a bit of a journey that starts with some of his own people turning on him in very interesting, very sneaky ways. And then it gets into the continued developments around how he's hosting the worst people at his private club and how no one around him is either willing or able to stop him from being such an insane idiot. And then we culminate in New York with the judge so furious, so frustrated, so sick and tired of all of the BS that they directly attack Trump and his team in court in a visceral brutal manner, especially for a judge. But we got to start with some of the other developments because right, right now, the reason Donald Trump gets in trouble, it's a common theme, is that he puts dum-dums around him and he puts people that frankly aren't that loyal around him because he's never loyal to them. And speaking of somebody maybe making a move against him, this happened earlier today. Today. Any comments about what you're here to talk about? So that's Kellyanne Conway, guys. She just went into the J6 committee. We don't know why. We don't know if it's voluntary or if she was subpoenaed. We don't know anything, but we do know she went in and there is no public subpoena. So maybe it's voluntary. And we definitely know she's not fighting tooth and nail to protect Donnie because even if she was subpoenaed, she could try to do what everyone else is doing and run out the clock because in a few weeks, we all suspect that this committee is going to go bye bye and that, you know, you can actually run the clock on this as opposed to say the DOJ, which is going to be a operating as per as it is until at least 2024 and hopefully longer if Biden wins re-election. But like that's a big deal. And at the same time, guys, we're seeing more and more information about why Donald Trump did what he did down at Mar-a-Lago. And this is big because it's the sort of man that just wants to create controversy. He just wants to create controversy, whether it's good or bad, because he's that desperate for a reaction and attention. And that really sets up what we're going to see later on in the video, where a judge freaks out at Trump and his team, because it's the same thing. Make BS arguments, try to rile things up just to get attention, except now it's backfiring on Trump. Days in power are numbered. You think you can replace us? You're wrong. We will replace you. This is an explicitly a white nationalist uh, anti-Semitic, anti-gay, uh, pro-male dominance individual here who had dinner with the former president of the United States and the leading candidate for president in 2024. All right, so Ashley Parker, that's what Vaughn was able to find out probably fairly easily about Nick Fuentes. We saw those posts over the weekend from Trump trying to distance himself from Fuentes. This is a very familiar pattern, though, for folks like you who've covered him uh, going back to his presidential and pre-presidential years, is it not? It, it absolutely is. And in all of that distancing, uh, one thing that struck me was what was not in it. There was no condemnation of Nick Fuentes. No. There was no condemnation of his beliefs, no condemnation of racism, white nationalism or anti-Semitism. Uh, and, and having covered him in, in certain ways, this is the sort of thing that happened to a lesser extent in the White House. There were not the traditional barricades around him. And then his sort of become magnified on steroids in his post-presidency, where he lost even, you know, those sort of few gatekeepers who, who did exist. So even if you take the former president and his team at their word that he didn't really know who Nick Fuentes was, which as Vaughn lays out, is is already somewhat dubious. And based on the number of times this president has lied and shared misinformation, there's no particular reason to take him on his word at this. But even if you believe that, just the fact that a racist, white nationalist, anti-Semite could get into the former president's private club and have a meeting with the, a dinner meeting with the former president, that in of itself is stunning.
Right, at the very least, it's extraordinarily sloppy. And we've been talking about Fuentes, but Victoria, the Kanye West piece of this is just as troubling in some ways because Donald Trump clearly knows who Kanye West is and knew about the kind of comments he has been making for the last several weeks, and he still welcomed him to his table. What's in that meeting for Trump or West, and what should we read into it? What I'm seeing here is is basically attention-grabbing, right? So this, to me, was a throwback of reality TV. And there is the political piece of it, of the white nationalism and cozying up to that. I'm going to set that aside for just a moment. But it's really about grabbing the spotlight. And it's something that Trump knows extremely well how to do. And he knows that the artists formerly known as Kanye West and Nick Fuentes are people that can guarantee the spotlight being brought back onto him. And then he can deny and he can backpedal and do what he has been doing. But I think when we look at Trump losing a little bit of his grip in the last midterm election. Elon Musk just coming out and saying that he would support Ron DeSantis in 2024. I feel that this is a little bit of a media desperation ploy to get back into the spotlight and doing it in such an incredibly negative way in highlighting white nationalism. Like you can see there, there's one of the analysts says like in a sick way, it's almost like Trump sees a positive in this guy's where he's like, well, everyone's talking about me. You know, people weren't talking about me quite as much before the midterms. And I guess losing got me in the media and then having dinner with absolute nut bars and, and racists got me in the media. So maybe this is what I need to do to get attention. And maybe this is what I need to do to sort of capture the moment again. And whether or not this ultimately works for him politically, I, I, I think is is a big question i do think it's possible honestly that it helps him in his party because there's absolutely terrible people by the millions maybe not even a majority of republicans but enough republican voters that in a split field maybe it'll help him but it's gonna doom him in the general it's gonna absolutely doom him a majority of americans already think this man is a monster and that's before he continued to do what he did you know you know what i mean like people people are already sick of him and then the last week happened and people are not only sick They're actively revolting and vomiting about Donald Trump. And here's a big part why. It's because whether it's lawyers, as we're going to get to, or whether it's advisors or whether it's staff or whatever, everyone around him is either unable to stop him, unwilling, or frankly, they're too scared to really tell him the truth. The public and politicians and the press should treat you. You're the bottom of the barrel. You don't deserve our time. Well, the Wall Street Journal editorial board has a new piece entitled Donald Trump's Bad Dinner Guests. It writes in part, quote, Donald Trump's presidential campaign is barely two weeks old and already it has his trademarks of bad company and bad judgment. Mr. Trump's failure to vet visitors is an example of his usual lack of organization and discipline. But worse is that Mr. Trump hasn't admitted his mistake in hosting the men or distanced himself from the odious views of Mr. Fuentes. Instead of Mr. Trump portrays himself as an innocent who was taken advantage of by Mr. West. This is also all too typical of Mr. Trump's behavior as president. Mr. Trump isn't going to change. And the next two years will inevitably feature many more such damaging episodes. Republicans who continue to go along for the ride with Mr. Trump are teeing themselves up for disaster in 2024, as they have for the past four. 2017, 2018, <laughs> 2019, 2020, 2022. Count them. Do, do we add 2024? Reverend Al. But it's also you know, one. Reverend Al, we, we, we talk all the time, you and I offline, about uh, how we've grown through the years, how we've had people that, that, that set us straight. Certainly, Mika sets me straight all the time. You talked about Coretta Scott King sitting you down and saying, hey, you know what? Stop playing for the cheap seats. Uh, move forward. And you said you said that made such a huge difference. I, I know you want to go, Jonathan, with a question, but it bears repeating that, that you and I and other people have people around them that can say no to them. Donald Trump doesn't have somebody that can even tell him, go out and apologize for the dinner because you know this guy is a neo-Nazi. <laughs> Absolutely. And and the people that you have around you that can say that can only say that if they are talking to you about who you really are. So when a Mrs. King said to me, Al, 
you can't use that kind of language. I don't care if it's slang. I don't care if it was unintended or if you were playing to the chief seats. It was appealing to, well, wait a minute, I'm really not that and I don't want to come off as that. Donald Trump has no problem coming off as that. And as you and I have had. Like it says there, he's got like this man, like there's no excuse here, right? Like he, there's no excuse. We, we've talked about this. I don't want to be, you know, belabor too much, but there's no way somebody gets to sit down at a table with Trump anywhere, anywhere without him knowing at least a huge amount of details, whether it's Secret Service stuff, whether it's his own advisors, whether it's his handlers, whether it's just somebody who's nearby him to give him points for small talk. Here's what this person's interested in. So if you have this awkward point, maybe you can mention that like all of these people are around him. Trump has this giant team. Team. And the fact is, at some point, either before, during or after that dinner, no one's been able to change his mind. And I think it's because one, may maybe people have tried and they failed, but I think a lot of them are just are, are just not good at their jobs. But also they're too afraid to actually say what's truthful. And the fact of the matter is here, it may be because they're unwilling to admit the truth that Donald Trump isn't going to condemn it because he doesn't want to. Because he believes in it, at least some of it, at least somewhat, at least partially. Maybe he's not all the way with Fuentes, but he's more with him than he is with folks like me and like you and other decent people. And here's where the stuff with the lawyer comes in, because it revolves around the case against his company. And right now, they're continuing to make some of the most BS arguments. And judges all over the country are getting sick and tired of the BS. And it came down today yet again. And you can feel the judge's frustration. And to set this stage, what happened was one of Donald Trump's lawyers tried to call a witness forward and the witness gave an answer they didn't like and they started whining to the judge about it and the judge basically told them to shut up, figure it out, stop wasting my time. And it says, the answer surprised me because it's just not true, Trump's lawyer said during a conference held after Bender and the jury left the courtroom during a lunch break. She said they were asking permission to confront Bender with records showing he spent more time working on tax returns for the Trump Corporation, the company's main subsidiary, than he let on. But the defense lawyer stopped short of saying she wanted to undermine her credibility of the jurors. I don't want to impeach the witness. I don't want to call her him a liar. That's impeaching the witness. The judge said already annoyed with the defense because it filed a court motion late Sunday night. So waking up the judge Sunday night, ruining his weekend. That's a real, that's a great strategy, guys. Appeared reluctant to grant the request, instructing her to refine her argument over lunch. I believe I've bent over backwards to allow both defendants to prepare a defense, said referring to the Trump Corporation and the other subsidiary, Trump Corp and the Trump Payroll Corp. As a gatekeeper, I don't believe that means I have to let you throw everything at the jury and see what sticks. And you know what the judge is referring to there, the metaphor. When you throw S word on the wall, S H uh, you uh, on and on, and you just let to see what sticks. And that's what they're saying, that Trump and his team are throwing BS on the wall, trying to see what sticks, calling their own witnesses liars without any shred of evidence. And right now the judges are sick of it and they're attacking Trump lawyers in court and therefore attacking Trump in court. So guys, this is where we're at. He's building all of these, these scandals and they're all connected. People are turning on him, going into the J6 committee, won't say why. His own people are unable or unwilling to walk him off the ledge with regard to his politics and his own lawyers are failing in court because fundamentally they're trying to create a case that doesn't exist.